Well, most of the verses I'm going to share have al already been shared already. Uh, um, I'd like to come at them with a different slant. I'm going to be talking about seeing his glory and how he reveals it to us, the effects of seeing his glory, how we will be able to see it much more clearly in the end. Um, my text is in Exodus 33 and verse 18. Now this is Moses talking. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, when my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And then skipping down to chapter 34, verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. So Moses asked to see God's glory. And God, in his mercy, showed Moses his character. He showed his glory, even though he could not show it fully because Moses was still in the flesh. He was still a man. But he did let Moses see. And I'm going to be expounding this verse with other verses that I'm sharing, that I'm going to be reading. Um, first of all, uh, how is God's glory manifested? You can't really see his glory with the physical eyes. It's not like a light you can see. And so God manifests it through his nature. When Moses asked to see God's glory, God proclaimed his nature. This says that his glory is demonstrated by his character. So if we want to see his glory, we should study his character. First of all, in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we behold this glory, and it's full of grace and truth. That's what the glory was. That's how we beheld it. It's his, Jesus' grace and truth. And of course, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So one aspect of his glory is his righteousness, his sinlessness. And, and also in our text, I think I'm going to read this section in Exodus 34 again, but be listening for how his glory is manifested in his character. And the Lord passed by him and before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. 
his, we can see his glory in all these things, in his forgiveness most of all, and in his mercy and long suffering, and also we see his glory in his justice. He will not clear the guilty. Every sin must be paid for, and this is the glory of God. And now, uh, a little bit about how God reveals his glory, the methods he uses. God did not refuse to show his glory to Moses, and he's not reluctant to show his glory to us. Instead, he is eager to reveal his glory to those who ask him. We're going to be looking at how he does that. Uh, Romans 9.21 says, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory? Even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So the key word in this passage is willing. God willing to show his wrath and and that he might make known the riches of his glory. God is willing to show us his glory. And if it wasn't for that, I might as well just stop right here. Because if God doesn't want to show his glory, we're not going to be able to see it. But praise to him, he does want to show us. Uh, Now, how does he do this? Exodus 24, 17, And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And so when God came down on Mount Sinai, it was... All it, there was devour, devouring fire, it was smoking, and there were earthquakes. And so, even with all the physical limitations, the glory of the Lord is magnificent. When we see it, it's awe inspiring. <coughs> um, and we know that the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth, for, showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So just look around us. We can see the glory of God. He has made it very evident in his creation that, it is, that this was not just by chance. This was God who made this, and this is his glory. But still some people will ignore that fact. They will close their eyes, but there's one one man who they cannot ignore, and that's Jesus Christ. So Jesus showed God's glory. He showed grace, he showed truth, righteousness, Forgiveness, love, all these aspects of God's glory. Uh, Isaiah 40, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together, where the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All flesh is going to, has seen Jesus, the glory of Jesus. This was God's plan all along to show us his glory through Jesus. Way back in Isaiah, he prophesied it. So all these other ways that he shows us his glory are kind of just supplementing 
Jesus. And this Jesus is the main way. Uh, the verse I read earlier, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us when we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this Jesus was made flesh, so we could see this. It, he was actually made a man. And he showed the glory of God. And then in Hebrews 1, verse 2, the subject of this sentence is God, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So what we see in this verse is that Jesus was the only one who could truly show God's glory. Amen. He was the only one who was perfect like God. And that was the only way that we would ever be able to know God's glory. Jesus demonstrated God's glory by paying for our sins so that we could be forgiven. This was God's glorious plan. This really glorified God. And Jesus was what the rock was representing that Moses hid in if when we hide in Christ then we can see God's glory and only in him will be, we be able to see his glory <clears throat> um, but God did not volunteer to show Moses his glory Moses had to ask now God will not reveal his glory to just anyone. Only those who seek with all their heart will find. Um, he has set out Christ as in for so anyone who wants to see God's glory will come to Christ and will seek him. Uh, Psalms 96 says, um, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Um, uh, I'm going to look at some ways that we see God's glory, ways that we seek. And one way is to listen to preaching. There are people who are declaring his glory and if we listen to the people who are who have been in the faith longer than us, who searched God's word, and they will be speaking it, and we need to listen. Yeah. And as when Lazarus died, uh, Jesus came over there, and he was talking to Mar Martha. And then Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? And we all know how Jesus raised him from the dead. But if thou wouldest believe, we have to believe to be able to see the glory of God. And it was not naturally possible for Lazarus to rise from the dead. Well, but when Martha believed, then she saw the glory of God. And likewise, it's not naturally possible for us to be made clean just by ourselves, yet when we believe, we are made clean. And this shows the glory of God. 
it all hinges on belief. And this is essential to see the glory of God. The gospel is also a way we can see in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so we, so God shines in our hearts when we believe the gospel. We have to believe this gospel for God to show us his glory. <clears throat> and this also says that the more we study the word, the more we believe the gospel, the more of God's glory we will see. Amen. And we also have to have the spirit. If we read the Bible and we didn't have the spirit, we wouldn't be able to see anything. Uh, when Stephen, when he was being stoned in Acts 7, Verse 55 says, He being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So being full of the Holy Ghost, he saw. This is what it takes to be able to see God's glory, being full of the Holy Ghost. And when we see God's glory, it should have effects. As I mentioned earlier, when Moses saw God's glory, he made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. So when we see his glory, we should have the same reaction of awe, worship, and obedience. Amen. <clears throat> this should change us. Uh, Numbers 14, verse 22, shows what happens when it does not change us, when we see God's glory. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. When there was not a dramatic change after seeing the glory of God, that there's great punishment for that. <clears throat> and some things that, some effects of seeing his glory, uh, John 2.11 says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Now it takes faith to see the glory of God, but when we see it, our faith is strengthened. That's one of the effects of seeing his glory. Our faith is made stronger. We also want to come when we see his glory. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So we want to come to his light. When we see his glory, we, would, we will come. <clears throat> now, in John 12, John related a prophecy from Isaiah, and then he wrote, These things said Isaiah, 
when he saw his glory and spake of him. And so this is an effect of seeing his glory, speaking of him. So when we see his glory, we should want to tell people this is such a great thing when we see it. Uh, here's my favorite one. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So who wants to be changed into the same image? We just keep on looking, even though it may be a glass, darkly, just keep on watching the glory of the Lord. But uh, looking forward to a day when we will not have to see through that glass, when we will be able to see him face to face. And so my last section is going to be on the glory to be revealed at the end. Moses could not see all of God's glory when he still had an earthly body. God said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Only when we get our spiritually, spiritual bodies will we be able to see God's glory fully. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Now that is, that is seeing God's glory. <clears throat> We're looking for that blessed hope and, and the glorious repeer, appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's going to appear in glory. And then in Matthew 24, 27, this is describing the glory of his coming. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so sh shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So all this is speaking of a glory that all will see. It, the, everyone will see his glory in the end. The people who have refused his, refused to see his glory in his creation, refused to see his glory in his son, refused to listen to people declaring his glory, then they will see, but it will be too late for them. The, this is going to be with joy for us, but with terror for them. And Jude and verse 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Amen. So we are going to be presented with exceeding joy. Now, the others who will see, they will be with terror, but everyone will see in that day. <clears throat> and Jesus prayed in John 17, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. We want that too. We want to see his glory without all the 
earthly things getting in the way, without being um, limited by this earthly body, we will see him in the end. And I'd like to close with this verse from Revelation 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now that is seeing God's glory. That all around us, the light is God's glory. So seek that glory, because when you, when you find it, it is wonderful, and it gives you strength.